Coming up on Tech News Today, a new publisher takes on Amazon and Apple. Why does Nike hate Android? Do they really? We'll talk about that. Plus, why everyone loves Amazon. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Tuesday, February 12th, 2013. Tech News Today is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow, send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile by Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Go to ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter TNT. And by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media files, go to pond5.com slash TNT. And by GoToMeeting with HD Faces by Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with colleagues and clients from anywhere. You can share the same screen and see each other face-to-face -face with HD video conferencing, even from an iPad. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use promo code TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. And I'm Jason Howell. Sarah Lane's at home. Veronica Belmont's here, Tom's sitting here. in her seat. We're going to talk to her in a little bit for the discussion stories, but let's start with the top 10 stories of the day in the news views. <laughs> Tim Cook seemed a, a different CEO this morning while speaking at the Goldman Sachs Investor Conference. Cook called the lawsuit from Greenlight Capital a silly sideshow, said OLED displays were awful, said Apple is just crazy enough to make any product as long as it wasn't crappy, and then opened up his wallet and dropped piles of hundos on the floor, claiming he's ready to make it rain. Okay, he didn't do that last part. But <laughs> Cook did say Apple has paid $8 billion out to developers, so he kind of is making it rain. Tesla founder Elon Musk has slammed a critical New York Times review of the Model S car after the reviewer wrote of problems completing journeys between two East Coast charging stations and had to call a tow service. Musk says diagnostic data from that test model shows the article left out details of undisclosed detours through city traffic instead of more fuel-efficient highway roads and that the reviewer didn't properly charge the car and drove too fast. The Times disputes this and in a statement says cold temperatures may have been a key factor to the car's poor performance. You yeah, drive too fast. It's too cold. Anyway, Twitter and Amex have partnered together for Amex Sync, a service that lets you buy things by tweeting a hashtag. You'd have to connect your Amex uh, card to your Twitter account. After that, if you see a deal on the Amex Sync Twitter account, you can tweet the hashtag. Amex Sync will have products from Microsoft, Sony, and Amazon available. Are you ready for another hot Android phone, folks? British designer Vertu has launched the new Vertu T, T that's spelled T-I, for a mere 7,900 euros. That's around uh, 10,600 bucks US. Uh, it's a 3.7 inch, 1.7 gigahertz Android 4.0 phone with a gig of RAM, but it's hand tooled by an English craftsman and made from titanium and crystal. Maybe Crystal. I don't know. Sonos wants you to ditch your big old clunky, expensive AV receiver. Those that's so yesterday, and buy a Sonos Play Bar. It's a six hundred ninety nine dollars sound bar that provides a complete audio system for movies and TV and games a three-channel system anyway, and will be available on March 5th. The Play Bar is almost three feet wide, contains nine different speakers, and is designed to either be mounted under your TV or laid flat on a table underneath. Bill Gates did a Reddit Ask Me Anything yesterday. Gates was asked what one Microsoft, Microsoft program or product that was never fully developed or re released do you wish had made it to market? Gates replied by referencing the WinFS file system that was last seen hanging around Longhorn. WinFS would have made Microsoft's true object-oriented file store, but never made it to market. Aw, that's sad. Uh, Microsoft folks also speaking at D-Dive Into Media, SVP for Interactive Entertainment, uh, it declared that the Xbox 360 is transforming from a game console to an entertainment console. So there you go. It's not a game console anymore. Stop calling it that. Nancy Tellum, head of Microsoft's LA Studios, talked about the 125 people working in Los Angeles who are trying to create 40 new interactive TV and entertainment apps, and Xbox is leaked out on Kotaku 
to have the next Xbox has leaked out on Kotaku with sources claiming the next version of it will require a Kinect to be plugged in and will be able to play multiple games at once. Back in November, Mojang had announced Minecraft Pie Edition was on its way, and today it is a reality. A new version of Minecraft is now available for free on the Raspberry Pi, which has a revised feature set based on the Minecraft Pocket Edition, Android and iOS apps, and supports multiple programming languages. With the Raspberry Pi, it's possible to edit Minecraft code at a base level, which gives users a lot of endless manipulation tools. Endless. Uh, Dish chairman Charlie Ergen compared Dish to Indiana Jones, claiming the company carries a rope and does a lot of archaeology. No, uh, he said the uh, company doesn't want to kill ads with its ad skipping feature on the Dish Hopper. That's the one that got it in hot water with CBS. He said he didn't want to put his head in the sand either, though, and figures embedding or targeting ads is a better model. Also, Dish is ready to help sell those ads anytime CBS or anybody else wants to cooperate with them. Ergen also said he's serious about Dish's bid to to acquire mobile carrier Clearwire. Qualcomm Lookout Broadcom just introduced its first LTE modem, and the company says it's 35% smaller than current chips. The LTE chip will make its debut at Mobile World Congress later this month. Prior to this move, Broadcom was best known for its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combo chips. This episode of Tech News Today uh, brought to you by Citrix and ShareFile. In business, effective communication is key. Tell me, I mean, that, that sounds like a... a you know, one of the, what is it called when people just say the same thing over and over and it loses cliche. meaning? Yeah, cliche, something like that. But it's true. If you don't say the right thing and people don't understand, stuff doesn't happen. Uh, you know, you need to send emails with attachments sometimes, and then the attachments are too big, or people are like, "I'm not opening that. I don't know if that's secure." So, don't go dropping your files into some weird dark corner on the internet. Try ShareFile by Citrix. They understand these challenges and they've created a better solution for business. Millions of accountants, lawyers, and other business professionals rely on ShareFile because it's easy to use. You can send files of almost any size securely. You can track the progress of your files. Notifications are automatically sent once the file is open so you know the person looked at it at least. Maybe they didn't understand it or read it, but you know they looked at it. And you can control who has access by using tools like password protection. You can even sign and edit files for streamlined collaboration. Plus, with ShareFile, you can access files from anywhere, your laptop, your tablet, your smartphone. That's pretty dang handy when I'm traveling around and somebody sends me some piece of mail, some contract I've got to review. I can open it in ShareFile and get it no matter where I am. we got a special offer for you so you can try ShareFile free. Sign up for a 30-day free trial today. You don't need a credit card, nothing to lose. Go to ShareFile.com, click on the microphone, and enter TNT, that's sharefile.com, and type in TNT. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. As I mentioned, joining us today, host of Techzilla as Sword and Laser, Veronica Belmont. How's it going, Veronica? Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming up to shoot Sword and Laser and <laughs> coming in early on Tech News today. <laughs> of course, anytime. It's going to be a long day, but it'll be a fun day. A little bit of a long day. Uh, hey, we've got some uh, cool stuff to talk about today, including a new publishing way of uh, of giving Amazon and Apple a little run for their money. Right, Sarah? Yeah, exactly. This is actually um, from uh, the book publishing startup Inkling. It's based in San Francisco. And the, the company has a publishing tool called Habitat, which it was previously, it, it, it's already existed, but it's now available to anybody. So that's you and me and anybody who wants to, to publish uh, a book for free. But this is not just sort of an Amazon type of book. These are multimedia book publishing tools. So you could have things like, you know, HD video embedded, interactive stuff, even 3D video. Uh, as an ebook, uh, as an ebook publisher, you can publish to iOS and the web uh, simultaneously, the web, uh, mobile web being HTML5. Uh, publishers can export their books as EPUB files as well. So you could sell your book through the iBook store, um, Apple's iBook store, other platforms like that. What's also nice is that the, the published formats will be fully indexable by Google. So they'll start to show up in search results as well. Now, I've, I've been very interested in this whole, you know, multimedia ebook format, you know, what's going to stick. You know, you've got, you've got the, um, the Apple's iBooks author, Inkling CEO, uh, Matt McInnes, says, here's the problem. Apple's iBooks author is a flop. Nobody's using it, certainly not on a grand scale. He says Amazon has built this huge, huge mega business based on just text-based text -based titles. So that's fine and good, but that's only a fraction of what the total book publishing market uh, can contain. 
and says the next step is illustrated. So when you think about textbooks, why shouldn't they be interactive? When you think about travel guides or cookbooks or some sort of a how-to type of a thing, this is the place where Inkling uh, should thrive. So not only have they uh, unleashed Habitat for free for anybody, and by the way, Inkling gets a 30% cut of any sale that you make through the Inkling store, so obviously they've got an incentive here to give this stuff for free, but they also have a uh, enterprise product uh, that is not free, it's subscription-based. So it would allow clients to build products under their own brands using Inkling's API. They also announced an academic model of Habitat, which would be free and not take a cut of sales. It's uh, working in conjunction with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I read all of this and I say, okay, looks like Inkling has got a product. Uh, they've, they've, they have really high profile clients already. They've been working with O'Reilly and Frommers and HarperCollins. New clients include Lonely Planet to kind of get into that sort of travel thing, Time, uh, DK, Rick Steves, and so on. But I still feel like I don't really come across an interactive book that someone says, Oh my gosh, this is this is the future of this is the future of publishing. You gotta see this, you gotta read this. And I spend a lot of time doing research on these companies. So uh I, Veronica, do you uh, I'll start with you. Do you are, are you interested in cookbooks sort of coming to life, not really as an app, but as 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 a multimedia ebook, for example? I actually really am because I, I use um when I do cook, I use my iPad almost, you know, pr predominantly. So this is actually really exciting for me. It's it's just exciting in general, especially with they're also doing an academic model um so that that'll be free. They'll still get a they don't take a cut of those sales. Mm. Um so that's that's super interesting I think for for educational purposes as well. But yeah, I would definitely use that as a cookbook. I would use that for like a how-to kind of guide. It kind of reminds me of Snap Guide a little bit, the iOS app. Um it's very similar in that it has like an interactive kind of interface um where you can learn how to do things and you're able to view pictures and view photos and view descriptions, leave comments, that kind of thing. And you can actually see step by step how to accomplish things. I think that's kind of like the next step in publishing. And I think there, uh, it seems like Inkling is really on top of that. The only thing I would like to see added to this is, and maybe they're on this and, and, I, and I just haven't dug deep enough, but is the ability to take that EPUB that they allow you to export and mm -hmm. have them submit it to multiple stores. Lulu yeah, does that. Yeah. Where once once you've uploaded your EPUB, you can authorize them to submit it to the Apple store, to Amazon store, to the Barnes and Noble store for you. It just saves you a lot of time. I'm also really curious to see what that conversion would look like if you have a very media heavy kind mm -hmm. of book that you're publishing on Inkling and then you want it to come out in, in the Amazon store or in one of the other stores that maybe don't have the same kind of multimedia capabilities. Um, you know, how much of that would be lost? How much of uh, how much do you have to think about the conversion in terms of how you're laying out your book when you're actually creating it? I haven't used the service yet. I, I think actually I might look into that for for certain reasons. Um, so I I'm, I'm very curious to see how how that kind of aspect would work. Well, apart from it being fully indexable, what really makes ebooks uh, rich ebooks that different from apps at this point or a rich website? Mm -hmm. It just seems like we have this artificial distinction. I could I could see this being very important for textbooks because that's the stuff that's always hidden behind walls. Hard to get, hard to update, but for everything else, it seems like if you're going to make, a, if you're going to develop for anything, either make an application for iOS or, or Android, or do a rich web app. Yeah, but, but this seems a lot more user friendly, especially for someone who doesn't have any kind of developer experience. You know, if you want to publish something that's really rich in content, not only in text but also in multimedia, um, this seems like a much more user friendly kind of experience than having to develop your own app. Mm -hmm. I just think that's a yeah, I think it, it's going to be interesting to see, especially since. I, as like you're saying, there are sort of websites and then you have apps and sometimes it's a little unclear why a developer went with one or the other. Then you've got this sort of ebook format that's going to be competing with apps, at least at least in certain markets. And and if, if, it's, if it's easier for someone like me who has absolutely no developer knowledge of how to put together an iOS or Android app or, or anything else, if it makes it easier for me to be able to put something together that looks uh, really professional, then, you know, they might have something here. All right. Uh, you know, something, somebody else that has something is Sonos. I love their products. I don't own one. I, I tried one out once, and I, I'm dying to allocate enough budget to justify, you know, putting Sonos all over my house, and now they've got a new product to add to it. Yeah, this is awesome. So it's the Sonos Play Bar. As I mentioned in the news views, uh, it's not available yet, but all the reviewers are, are, are chatting about the Sonos, um, at, at least in my audio video circles. Uh, it'll be released on March 5th for $699 in the U.S. 
Uh, 700 euro in the EU, 600 in the UK. So it's, you know, 700 bucks. And it's a single bar. So when you look at it, it kind of looks, it looks sort of small in some of the, uh, in the reviewer photos, but it's almost three feet wide. So, you yeah. know, you've got a big TV and then you'll have the Sonos bar under it. You can mount it or it could be designed to lay on some sort of a media stand um, under t your TV or, or kind of in front of it. It contains nine different speakers on the inside. So three tweeters, six mid-range, and it's angled at 45 degrees. So whether you mount the sound bar on your wall or you lay it flat, it's it's designed to provide the best sound, you know, in, in a variety of different ways. So it's a full three-channel audio system. The, the point one is would be something else. Uh, uh, some of the reviews say that um, the, uh, the the contained bass is pretty good, but Sonos does have a separate uh, subwoofer that works really well with this. Mm -hmm. And then it has really just bare minimum of connectors. So for anybody who's interested in cable management, you got a power cord, you got two Ethernet jacks, and then you have an optical cable to hook it up. Uh, to your television. And the whole idea, and Sonos has been doing this for years, but this is really just the next step. The whole idea is you don't need some huge hardware solution in the form of an AV receiver to be able to have all your devices talking to each other, you know? Um, the, the folks over at Sonos say a lot of people have really fancy TVs now and they're just not necessarily going to uh, spend the time and effort you know, like someone like me did not even a year ago to to spend all this money on a really complicated home theater audio system. But you're watching all this content. You know, you're 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 playing games. You're watching TV. You got movies. You need something that's that's nice that 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 sounds good and just doesn't take up a lot of room. And that the future of all of this is software based. Sonos um, has uh, uh, the Sonos apps and is. Uh, able to pull in from a variety of um, content sources online. So to me, even though I feel like, hmm, if I would have known a little bit more about this play bar nine months ago, maybe I wouldn't have spent my life savings on a really complicated audio setup, hmm. but this does seem like the, the future. Um, and, and I love the idea of getting rid of uh, the bulk um, and putting that in into a software solution. Uh, for Sonos. And to me, $700, I mean, I know $700 is, is a lot of money, but for something that's supposed to mimic a 3.1, you know, surround sound atmosphere, and from what I hear, it sounds really good, that is cheap. For for True Five One though, I feel like this is probably not the best solution. I mean, I think it's it's price wise at least because if you're if you're getting this device and then you if you want to get the sub, that's another six hundred dollars. And then if you want to get to you know play three speakers to add to the the speakers, uh, that's that's another you know four hundred dollars. It's starting to feel like bosy. It's getting in a little bit. I mean, I love Sonos. I love their products. They sound fantastic. I I really want to sub in my house right now, although probably not necessary, but you can get a really great home theater in a box for like 1500 bucks that you can interchange the, the components with. And you can, you know, if you want to update your, that your speakers at some point, if you, if you get a new, um, receiver, for example, with more inputs, you can do that pretty easily. Um, definitely the, the wireless part is, is awesome. Um, but I don't know. I feel like for, for getting a true 5.1 system, this just doesn't seem like a cost efficient way of doing that. I would rather just have the, the play three speakers around or maybe have key. this one around, you know, separately from my home theater system somewhere else in the house. That's the key is it's not cost efficient. Right. I think this looks great. And if you already have a Sonos system set up, it might be perfect. Yes. But it's pricey. Uh, I, I was actually in, the, I've been looking at single like sound bars for my TVs uh, for my TV, actually. Uh, and the other day on Home Theater Geek, Scott Wilkinson just happened to answer the question of, like, what's the best sound bar for your money? And he recommended the Yamaha YAS-101 or the Vizio VHT215. Both of those are less than $300. Yeah, I mean, sound bars, are they're, they've been around for a while. They don't provide the same kind of experience, but they're better than the TV speakers, and they're better than the other solutions you can mm -hmm. get. But when it comes to Sonos, they're about convenience and ease of use, right? So if you have this... Probably, this is a very expensive sound bar. If the quality is good enough and it's really easy to use, I could see people going for it just because it would integrate with that Sonos system. Mm -hmm. But like I was looking into the prices of Sonos and I was like, well, I probably will 
figure out a way to make my own because this is a little bit too pricey for something that I would do because I would also run wires everywhere. Screw yeah. it. I'll have the 5-1. <laughs> I don't need this little sound bar. I am super curious to hear um, what if, if it has what the virtual surround is like in this device, if it does any kind of that kind of capability. Um, yeah, uh, most like of those sound, sound bars, bars are, are pretty good at that, but but it's not the same. It's not the same, um, but Sonos has a great reputation for just having, you know, fantastic audio quality in their devices. So I'm, I'm curious to get my hand, my ears on it, I guess, see how it sounds. Um, so Don't yeah. get too close. Don't get too close. It'll, Blow out your eardrum. No. Yeah. Yeah. Too late for that. <laughs> yeah. You won't get the proper surround experience. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about uh, Twitter and Amex. Uh, I've bought I've bought Sarah Lane a beer over Twitter once. Is that the same kind of thing they're talking about? Sort of, I guess. Well, this is a, an official deal between American Express and Twitter. If you follow Amex Sync, that, that account, you have to connect your Amex card to your Twitter account. You find a special hashtag on this Amex Sync Twitter account. You see something you want, you tweet the hashtag, you receive a notification, then you have to tweet another hashtag within 15 minutes to confirm the purchase. So it's not like you're just tweeting once and you're accidentally buying things all the time. Uh, also, you have uh, no protected accounts are allowed. So if you buy anything with this, it's public. So you have to make sure that everyone can see this. So it's an interesting kind of kind of gimmick. Veronica, what do, you, what do you think of this gimmick? Would you ever use this? No. <laughs> this sounds like a terrible idea. I'm not even entirely sure why. Maybe just because it seems like a big promotional, like, marketing baloney. I can't say the word I actually want to say on the air. Um, it, it just doesn't seem a very effective means of paying for something. Bull's height? Bull's height. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I'd rather use Square. I'd rather use something like that. Uh, it, it, I just don't really see... I mean, maybe I just haven't come across the correct use case, like a situation where this would be a lot easier to do or more convenient to do or more fun to do than just actually paying for something. I don't know. Sarah, somebody at, at Cantor Retail said this was technology for technology's sake. Is there something we're not seeing about this that's cool about, about buying things to, through Twitter? Because it just seems like, yeah, you can do it. Why? Wee. Yeah, I, I don't even really, I don't think I would call it technology for technology's sake. It's just advertising. Uh, you know, this is, yeah, this is a tweet a special hashtag. Yeah, because your friends are going to love that. Everybody <laughs> loves that. And then, and then within another few minutes, you got to do it again. And you're just, get, it's, it's spammy stuff. I, I do think that it's very interesting to me that Twitter seems to be really into experimenting with pretty much any kind of monetization tool, you know, partner with a big company and see what sticks. So it's, it's interesting, but no, I would not participate in this. And I think you would just contribute to Twitter noise that no one's really asking for. I would maybe create a new, totally different account that had nothing to do with my normal account and just use that for buying stuff. Well, Veronica shopping. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm looking at this. Veronica I'm like, shops. I don't, I mean, I don't get this other than like, I mean, every time I see my buying thing from Amazon it has that little link at the end. Hey, tweet this, share this. Like, why? Why would I ever <laughs> explain to him, hey, I just bought a 5-1 system. I was like, you don't. Good for you. I like, could already hear the trolls at replying me. I just bought a bunch of dog food. Right. Because I'm Why lazy do and it's I heavy. care? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's supposed to have deals and things, and I think that could get some excitement going. I could definitely see it. I see in ads if you're watching like a big event, it's like, hey, there's a hashtag on whatever Budweiser, and like, bingo. Oh, I, I, that. I, I, I could see all kinds of reasons why this is great for people selling things. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah I'm not sure that. I, I must be missing something. Is this going to add a lot more noise no. to Twitter? Or is anybody ever going to actually yeah. use this? I don't want. I don't want more noise on Twitter. All right, uh, we got we got a couple more good stories to talk about, but want to thank our other sponsor for today's show, Pond Five, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're out there, uh, an aspiring filmmaker, uh, video YouTuber, you're you're making all kinds of shows, maybe audio podcast plays, whatever kind of media you're creating, Pond Five can help you out with. They are the stock media marketplace with photos. Vector illustrations, music tracks, sound effects, customizable motion graphics templates, 3D models, not to mention all those, the, the B-roll we were talking about, all the video out there. Think of pretty much anything you need. Flames, elephants, people typing on keyboards, Stonehenge, it's all there. <laughs> P-O-N-D-5.com. And if you're the kind of person who's going around getting cool shots, I was out running yesterday and some lady had her camera across the, the, the road. She was fil filming me 
running down the road with my dog. I'm like, I'm going to be in somebody's B-roll now as the guy who runs with his dog. Uh, You can upload your stuff to Pond5 and get top market rates. You set the price. They pay 50% royalties for each and every sale. Uh, The prices are unbeatable. So try it out. Go go there and uh, take advantage of Pond5's 50 free stock media files at pond5.com slash TNT. That's P-O-N-D, the number 5.com slash TNT. And we thank Pond5 for their support of Tech News Today. How do you know that person wasn't just waiting for you? They, it could be a stalker. Yeah. Yeah. I think chat I room may, has the right oh, That's why I had to leave Los Angeles <laughs> and come to Petaluma today. <laughs> you like, need some cool off time. It's a secret story. <laughs> throw, your, throw your path a little bit for a while. Uh, why does Nike hate Android? Uh, that's a good question. That's what people are asking at this point. But Nike says it's not working on an Android app for its fuel band. Now, Malcolm Perrin tweeted Nike support and said, hey, where's your Android app? At Nike support responded by saying, right now we're focused on iOS and web. We're not working on an Android app. This is over February 9th and 10th. And Nike PR confirmed Nike isn't working on an Android version of the mobile app, saying the same thing, working on iOS and web component. Now, back in March of 2012, at Nike Fuel said that an Android app was coming out in summer 2012. That obviously never happened. So according to Comscore, by the way, Android owns over 50% of the U.S. smartphone market. Veronica, how long can companies like Nike ignore Android? I just don't understand why they would at all. I mean, I I, I know there's a lot of different flavors of Android, so maybe that leads to some of the tasty flavors. <laughs> mm, tasty <laughs> jelly bean. But it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me. And, and and other pedometers are not doing that. I mean, I'm pretty sure Fitbit has an Android no, app. Well, you know, I, Eileen I, just bought one. Yeah, she's using it with her Motorola Razr M. Exactly. So I I think it's bad for the for competition's sake as well. Um, and just for the users. I mean, if, if you're a big brand like that, I don't really see why it would be such a, a stretch to, you know, to work on something like an Android app because I'm pretty sure they have the resources at Nike. Unless Nike and Apple have something else cooking. It's possible, that, yeah. You know, so 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 Nike is basically mm-hmm. saying without saying, we've got some exclusivity with Apple because you're right, it's, 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 insanity to say no nah, android is really not what we're focused on right now i mean you're, you're just losing out on on like potentially millions of people buying your products well it's so true that's kind of what it sounds like to me yeah especially since the nike plus app um was you know it was baked into things like the nano and, and other apple devices in the past um so maybe if that crazy watch is gonna happen for example Maybe it's going to be built into that oh, automatically. Oh, it's a Who Nike knows? Sport Watch. It could be a Nike Sport Watch with made Swatch by- on board. Mm, yes. Ooh. <laughs> are we just making things up <laughs> yeah, now? Totally are. <laughs> well, I mean, the Jawbone Up's got the same situation. They have an only an iOS uh, app. They don't have a web component. They don't have Android, and it seems to be a very popular device in general. I don't know why you would bother to not do this. Like, if Sarah's idea of a partnership sounds probable. I mean, between those two companies, yeah. because like you were saying, Veronica, it was in the Nano. It was in a lot of devices. But I really think it's just you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're not catering to the Android market, or at least partner up with Samsung or something. Go to like with the Galaxy series or something, but not go all Android because if you have to support from 2.3 and up, that could be a disaster. And how just are you going to run if you shoot yourself in the foot? That's right. Slowly. No yeah, Nike painfully. shoes going to help you then. No. <laughs> I, uh, no. I, I think Jawbone. It makes more sense to me because they started on iOS, right? And I think a lot of people start on iOS. If they come out with an Android app then it just makes Nike look, look awful here because they said on Twitter, yeah, we're doing an Android app. And then they're like, oh, no, we're not doing an Android app. That makes me think it's exclusivity. But I have one yeah. thing to say to Nike about the Android app. Just do it. <laughs> oh, you've been waiting to say that. Kind of was. Uh, Microsoft that. talking at uh, D Dive into Media yesterday. Uh, digital media president Nancy Tolib. She's the former number two at CBS. She was Les Moonves' uh, right-hand executive for many years until last summer. Plans to launch 40 interactive TV and entertainment apps on Xbox Live by the end of the year, making shows interactive using the Kinect. Uh, they use children's programming as an example where kids could interact with the characters on screen. Could kind of see that working. As we mentioned, they've got a, that big LA studio. There's 46 million subscribers to Xbox Live. Microsoft as a content generator. Bunch of people in the studio. I think they're actually in Santa Monica. They might be in L.A. Uh, trying to figure out shows, but they're not shows. They're apps, but they're not apps. They're What's what's your best guess, Ayaz? What are we going to see from Microsoft? Yeah, Is this I'm, a good I'm, idea? I'm thinking interactive stuff. I mean, they were talking about, what was that, that game show, One versus 100 or something? I think that was on Xbox. You actually had an interactive component. The thing about 
like I was talking about smart TVs the other day, getting people to get interactive with television, not exactly a thing that happens. The Xbox, though, is a totally different thing. So you're used to using a controller. You're used to interacting with it. I think what, if they're smart, they'll have a lot more things that can be interactive with the user and you're actually experiencing something mm -hmm. at a certain time. Because if you're just going to be in the content business with everybody else, well, what's, what's your hook? It's like already on the Xbox. Interactivity, I think, is the key. They had a lot of success with that, I think, during the um, election. Uh, they did a lot of live polling during the debates, for example. Um, so that could definitely be something that is baked into some of their products. But I also think it might just be a, a content grab kind of thing. Because, like you said, there are a lot of different people doing original content for, you know, for, for you know, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu is doing it. So it, it just makes sense that maybe they're jumping in there now, especially since they do have that 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 market right now they do have all of those users already actively engaging with 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 uh, the Xbox and with their content so it might just be might just be a good time for them as well especially with the potential launch of, of a new console it's an entertainment console it now, is definitely not yeah. a game console mm -hmm. as they said uh, Sarah are we I mean with, with the presidential mm -hmm. debate that's a good example but the contents made for you there what are we going to well, see Microsoft? Yeah, make? and the presidential debate is something you can weigh in on, but you're not necessarily, like, connecting it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> i got to do this I'm going to slap you in the points. face, candidate. So that's, I mean, I, to me, I, I sort of go, yeah, i got to see this in practice. It's like children's programming, and we go, oh, yeah, kids like that whole thing, but it's like, well, what would it look like? I mean, are we watching a cartoon, and there's some sort of interactive component? I think interactive TV it, in general, it just kind of makes me want to groan just because there's been so much stupid stuff that's come out thus far. I, I think, I think, I think um, Microsoft is definitely on the right track, um, but I'd like to see what kinds of live shows incorporate the connect and don't make us all feel ridiculous. I, I think part of me thinks about, I don't know if you were at Tech TV at this point or if it predated you, but Microsoft did a, a game show on, on Tech TV. Uh, oh, I remember. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Mm -hmm. um, see, that's what I'm thinking about. That's what I think about, I think like about too. Go, you know, sometimes we just want to sit. Yeah, and get, that's why the kids programming makes sense to me because you think about Romper Room, like saying the names of kids out there mm -hmm. or, or Reading Rainbow where there were interactive elements even though you couldn't actually affect the screen. There were things they would say, okay, kids, now do this, now do that. So that would be cooler with the Connect where it could actually detect kids doing things or, or being, you know, they could be able to grab letters off the screen. I could totally see that, but I don't know. Are we going to see House of Cards? Are we going to see the booth at the end? kind of stuff from Microsoft? Are they going to force some hokey interactivity? I think when you say Microsoft, we all panic. If you think the Xbox division, I think it's a little easier to swallow. Maybe. But, oh, they don't do too bad a job versus Microsoft. You're going to think a Steve Ballmer is going to walk out. <laughs> totally Actually, I want to see a Steve Ballmer reality show. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be freaking awesome. Interactive. I want Steve to turn left. That. Yeah. Well, let's finish up with this uh, Harris poll of corporate rep reputation. Uh, Amazon has dislodged Apple as the most beloved brand in the, uh, in the country, it's the best reputation, actually, is, is what it's measuring. Uh, Apple's still number two. Disney, number three. Really? So this is the kind of thing, like, when you say, like, is this a good reputation? Amazon beats Disney and Apple, Google, number four. And Johnson & Johnson, number five. That, they're always up there, too, because mm -hmm. they make all the baby products and stuff. So they have, they have a lot of good feelings out there. Uh, interesting here. Amazon ranked five points ahead of any other company in the area of emotional appeal. This is a website. You can't go in there to the store. Uh, but they have emotional appeal five points ahead of Disney. <laughs> That's kind of amazing, actually. Uh, they also topped the reputation in products and services, uh, and Apple topped the charts in vision and leadership and financial performance. And that's mm. what kept them up near the top. I, I, I love me some Amazon. I am a true believer in Amazon. Okay, but there's Apple haters out there for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's Google haters out there for sure. Their sure. face Facebook was number 42 on this list, one of the lowest yeah. tech, I think the lowest tech company maybe. They're right mm -hmm. between Best Buy and T-Mobile. Uh, why is it that we hate all of these others? Microsoft actually didn't too bad, 15th. And, and Amazon gets a pass. Well, because Amazon is every brand, right? I mean, you can be an Apple hater and then you find the the kind of stuff that you want at Amazon. Amazon is not, you know, doesn't leave anybody behind. I think that's why consumers love it so much because you don't really have to have an allegiance to anything to enjoy Amazon. You get anything you want. 
Phil in the chat room says Amazon is my Santa. You know how many times I've ordered something and not remembered what it is? And you see that little smiley face and you're like, you're yes, like, oh, Amazon. What's it be? That might be it. And that's the thing. You're really excited and you, it's, it's just like a It's like Christmas box. every time you get an Amazon yeah. box. Yeah, because you, you, buy, you buy things on Prime all the time. You don't realize what you're getting. And then you're like, oh, surprise. It's just poking the reward center of your brain every time you order something. Mm -hmm. That's why we that. love Amazon. And it it's happens so quickly. I mean, the shipping now, is if you're a Prime member, you get it like the next day. Yeah. That's magical. And TechCrunch pointed out, Amazon knows just as much about you, if not more, than Facebook. Or Google. Or, or Google, yeah. I think, I think Amazon knows more about me than Google probably does. Because they're tracking everything you buy. They have your good. credit card information. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it's kind of scary what they have, but people trust them. They're like, oh, but Amazon would never hurt me. <laughs> Amazon will never turn on me. They bring me gifts. You're paying for them. <laughs> they're where the presents come not from. they free. Yeah, no, I think that's it. Because yeah. I remember in the 90s, Amazon was hated. Because they were driving out the local bookstores mm -hmm. and they were undercutting book prices. And Amazon was on their way to being another Apple, Microsoft, Google, where, you know, they they had their, their cache of haters. And I know there's probably still some of those out there, but it seems to have really faded away. And I think that's I think you I think we nailed it. Who was it in the chat room? Phil. Phil, good job. I think you I think you solved the mystery. I, They're bribing us. I almost feel like this used to be eBay back in the '90s. Remember when eBay came along and people mm -hmm. it got so popular because people were like, "I'm winning something. I'm winning something that I'm yeah. really passionate about." And I and I get it. And yeah. Everything. You got that about eBay, but that kind of burned off at some point. Well, that because kind of the, excitement, the, the, you know? the uh, auctions became less fun. Yeah. Because people got really serious about them, and sniping started mm -hmm. to happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't even like to post stuff on eBay because no. it's too it's too complicated and totally. weird now. I feel like you have to do it in a very certain kind of way if you want to be successful at selling your product. I have to be careful buying on eBay. Uh, every once in a while, I'll just on a whim, I'll bid on something. I always get outbid. Mm -hmm. But then every once in a while, I don't. I'm like, oh, I just... I just bought that. I thing. don't. That's I, mine now. I really wasn't Great. that serious. Great. I about won. It. I yeah. won. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the randomizer. A uh, Colorado TV station. Now, I heard this was a Montana TV station, but it's actually KRTV in Colorado. Uh, got hacked. Uh, its emergency alert system so got hacked. So while a commercial break was happening out of the news, suddenly a voice came on, a kind of a slightly disguised serious voice with the emergency alert symbol or signal, you know, the, the, those beeps saying bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. In fact, there is a video there on YouTube, Jason. If you skip right to the middle of that, you'll hear. So they come out of the news, and all of a sudden you hear, oh, while the commercial's playing, the, the big beep. Now, this on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. This warning applies to all areas receiving this broadcast. Turn in to 9.20 a.m. to get updated information in the event that you are separated from your television or if electrical service is interrupted. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising. <laughs> 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 the Follow the messages it, on screen. I'd almost also, believe pancakes. that. I, I, I feel like if that was really something that happened, I mean, you'd, you'd sort of look around like... Uh, am I hearing? Am I the only one hearing this? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and the key is that the, the emergency alert visual did not come up because they didn't right. hack into the switcher, so the commercial break was still running, and you could actually still hear the pancake commercial a little that bit. I was fascinated by the video of the pancakes while that was going on. But didn't yeah. Walking Dead just come back on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. This somebody's like viral plan to go. Hey, look! I don't remember think this? They is need that. Yeah, it's viral. True. <laughs> Unfortunately, because that would be amazing. No, I think it was just one of those situations also, where. Okay, that hacking was amazing. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, irresponsible is all hell. Oh, yeah. But I suppose impressive in skill. Well done, sir. Yeah. I, I, or ma'am, I applaud you for that. <laughs> let's uh, let's that. take a, uh, a break and thank uh, Citrix once again for sponsoring uh, Tech News today. This time I want to tell you about Go to Meeting, though. When your entire team can get together, it's pretty amazing. I, I'm here in Petaluma today, but of course Sarah can't make it in. She's at Skype. It's really hard to get people together. Everybody's got so much. Projects take weeks. Decisions take days. Uh, gathering everyone together from different locations can be time-consuming, expensive, and often just plain impossible. So don't try to move the people. Use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Makes it easier for your entire team to get together online whenever you need to. It doesn't matter where they are, how far away they are. With GoToMeeting, you share the same screen, you stay on the same page, and the built-in HD video conferencing makes your online meetings just like being in the same room. You can look right in the eyes. 
and C, Ayaz does not understand what I'm saying, right? Oh, no, he That's does. Usual. He just hates what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, plus, it's simple to launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, even present from your iPad. Try GoToMeeting for free for 30 days. Don't wait. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TNT. Remember, use that promo code TNT, and we thank them for their support of Tech News Today. What's on the calendar, Sarah? Lots of jelly beans. Google started rolling out Android 4.2.2. Jelly bean. Are you ready? Also, tomorrow, sadly, Windows Live Mesh is closing down. And if you don't know what that is, neither do I. You missed it. <laughs> it was actually it was actually one of uh, Microsoft's cooler storage <laughs> experiments, but SkyDrive pretty much incorporated yeah. it, so it's gone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Let's see what's incoming. Incoming message. Jason from Canada, not Jason who's going to play hey, T -T. this MP3. Uh, crew, this is Jason Howell. I'm, uh, <laughs> Wait, no, 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 oh. different Jason. <laughs> uh, this Jason has a thought on the next PlayStation. Hey, TNT Show, this is Jason from Canada calling. I'm wondering if with Sony, um, the reason why maybe their new PlayStation isn't going to be very hardware-based, I'm wondering if that's because they bought Gaikai and uh, they're going to move everything to cloud games, which might be cool. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Love mm. the show. Bye. Yeah. I think... I still think it's unlikely that they would make a full move like that, but that's gonna that's gotta be a feature in the next PlayStation, right? Well there was that rumor that Microsoft is gonna do like a, a dumb box and a very expensive console. That's made more sense to me for Sony. That they could yeah, have a right, cloud box have and the very expensive PlayStation 4. On to the emails. Sure, we got an email from Marlon, the guy from Trinidad. I think that the user satisfaction survey you mentioned yesterday has more merit than you ascribed to it. And in general, user satisfaction surveys are biased towards more expensive devices. However, in this survey, the top three were low-cost phones with the Atrix HD being $0 on a contract. What was also interesting was the 4G impact. The top five devices were 4G-capable devices, and users with a 4G subscription reported a higher device satisfaction, and it also had an impact on network operator satisfaction. Yeah, those are good points. Hmm. If you don't pay a lot for the phone, you're more forgiving when mm -hmm. it does mess up. You're more satisfied. And then if you've got these high speeds, that's the other big complaint is like, oh, it's taking forever to do this. So and those eh, could be good could be points. It. Got another email from Chip in Boston who says, I was listening to episode 688. You were discussing set-top boxes and interfaces and how complicated they can be. Tom said he wished that there was a box where he could just search for the name of a show and it would display all the devices you could watch that show on. Chip says, it exists. The Xbox 360 with Connect Voice Search will let you do just that. All you say is Xbox, Bing, whatever, and it'll display a list of shows or movies that match that name. 99% of the time, it's the first option. You select the show, and it brings you to a page where you can watch the latest episode or select past episodes. And then once you do that, you want to watch a show, it'll, list a, uh, it'll show a list of providers that have the episode, like Netflix or Amazon or your cable provider, and it works perfectly. He says, it's the only box I use to watch all of my online content. The best part is no remote, just voice. That's pretty great. Um, it still doesn't do with exactly what I'm talking about, right? And I know a lot of people in the chat room are like, Bing, Bing on the Xbox. A, Xbox, you have to you pay for the service to use all of this stuff. But okay, it is the box that does it. You have to pay s subscription fees for other things too. Uh, but I, I have not found it to work perfectly. And I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. But uh, the Avengers, it, not the movie, but the TV show from Britain in the 60s, doesn't, even sh doesn't, doesn't know what that is. It doesn't know where it is. It, because it's not available in a lot of places. So I don't know. Well, is that its fault then if it's, it's not available? Yeah. In it a lot should of be able to just tell me, like, okay, but these, these are the places that you can get it. Well, it's probably searching through their. Or at least tell me that there are. It's just not available. Clicker will do that. It'll say, "Yeah, there's lots of seasons of the Avengers. You can't watch." Well, isn't them. that worse than when you see something's around and you just can't click it? I mean, maybe that's user experience. Yeah. If you saw, I have oh, found. Yeah, okay, I this. forgot about this, so I apologize for that. But I have found this to be about the same effectiveness as the one on the Google Box. The Google TV has the same thing where you type in a name and it'll tell you all of the services that are available for it. So we're getting closer. And and give Microsoft credit for being one of the companies that's getting closer. All right. Let's uh, finish off with Mink, who says, Hey, TNT team, in response to the GNU X-Wings that we talked about yesterday in the randomizer uh, on Kickstarter, they address your concern in the risks section. 
Okay, it was the randomizer. I'll, I'll admit I didn't read all the way down because <laughs> I was too excited about X-Wings. Uh, they say, in the hilarious and unlikely event that we come close to reaching our funding goal, we will pull the plug on the project. So even more kudos to Kickstarter for having a sense of humor and approving Yeah, I was going to say, doesn't that violate their, their terms of, of it service? It does. No, yeah. it totally does. But Kickstarter probably was like, all right, okay. this is too funny. Yeah. Wasn't so, there a Kickstarter for the Death Star as well? That's what this was in response to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Get it? I should watch your show. Yeah, me too. Well, that is it <laughs> for this episode of Tech News Today. You should also watch Veronica's shows. What are they? Oh, um, Techzilla over on Revision 3. Also, I'm now doing a show called Factor Fictional on the uh, Tech Feed channel on That's YouTube. That's a fun show. It is. It's People a lot of fun. People definitely check both of those out. We're doing a lot of Star Trek tech recently. So we did uh, Medical Tricorders. We did, um, I think we did... Uh, what was the other one? We're doing a tractor beam episode, um, and we're also doing zombies and and for Valentine's Day and and what it would be like if you were to fall in love with a zombie. This How would that warm work? Warm bodies, kind of. Yeah, weird. a little yeah, bit yeah. related to All that. Right. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, and sword and laser. Sword and laser. Bam. Go subscribe <laughs> now. We're gonna go interview uh, Trudy Canavan and Jacqueline Carey. Yes, we are. So those will be coming in the f coming month. Mm -hmm. That is it for us. Technewstoday.reddit.com is our subreddit. You can uh, tell us what stories you'd like us to discuss. Uh, and vote on whether you would like them to be discussed or not as well. You can even say no. Say yes. Whatever you want. Technewstoday.reddit.com. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us. Our email address is TNT at twit.tv. Or you can give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. We've been getting some great voicemails lately. Thank you guys uh, for concise, insightful voicemails. 260-TNT-SHOW. We will be back tomorrow, and I'll be here. See you then.